Hey there, what's going on? Leafy here and welcome back to another Albion Online video. Let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes players make in Albion Online. Quick heads up, these aren't just things that newer players do. Even players who have been playing for months, maybe even years, are still guilty of making some of these mistakes. And the sooner you stop making these mistakes, the better your game experience will be, meaning you will have access to more content, better content and more fun overall, which in turn will also affect your progress within the game in a positive way. So if you are a new player, you can save a lot of time, silver and trouble by avoiding these mistakes altogether. Starting off with one I think a lot of new players are guilty of, but one that many seasoned players never stood still at, which is not trying the different weapons within the game. Choosing your weapon in Albion Online is an overwhelming process, since there are so many different weapons to play, and you probably want to level up your weapon of choice as quickly as possible, which will take a lot of time, effort and dedication, so choosing the wrong weapon will be a huge waste of resources. It's why I always recommend newer players to take their first couple weeks to feed their curiosity by trying out whatever weapons they want to. This way you'll get a feel for the different weapons and the playstyles they offer and you won't have to look back once you start putting in real effort to level up your weapon of choice. To add on this, I think there is a big misconception in that you should pick only one weapon tree and fully focus on that until you have it maxed. In my opinion, it's alright to have a main weapon tree and level that as much as possible whenever you get the chance to do so. But there's nothing wrong with having one or two sub weapon trees which you also level and play at the same time. I think there are many benefits to this since it will make for variety in gameplay in case you get bored of your main weapon tree. It will also give you more roles to fill when you join a party, offer you better options throughout different content and something to fall back on in case your main weapon tree gets nerfed or altered. And when I say nerfed or altered, I mean really nerfed or altered, which is why the second big mistake any player can make is chasing the meta in Albion Online. Any player that's been going at it for a while already knows how extreme Sandbox Interactive can be when it comes to nerfs and changes. A 70% nerf on the effectiveness of an ability is very normal in this game. The weapon you just spent months leveling to get to 100 might just have its special ability changed completely overnight. And the global nerf on the entire weapon tree in which abilities lose their perks is nothing new either. Now I'm not saying these are good practices, in fact I fully despise this type of balancing and haven't ever seen these extreme levels of nerfs and changes in any other game before. And since this is something that's out of your control, you need to look at which aspects you do have a decision in. So not choosing a weapon or a build based on how they perform in the current meta is already a step in the right direction. Especially meta items are very likely to get nerfed and changed. Instead, base your decision on the overall use and feel of a weapon tree or build, which kind of goes together with trying out different weapons to see which playstyle you like most. Which brings me to my next point, respacking. Whether you are meta chasing like the previous mistake, or you didn't ever explore the different weapons and ended up leveling something you no longer want to use, you might think of respacking. And that is the third big mistake you can make in Alpine Online. Not only does respacking cost you a lot of money, you also lose a big part of your progress whilst doing so. The biggest issue within this is that aside from the silver and fame loss, you have no guarantee. As I explained in the previous mistake, items are constantly seeing drastic nerfs and buffs within Albion Online, so you might spec out of something that could very well become meta or see a big positive change. A great example is the Great Axe which was the king of solo dungeons for years and was purely known as a PvE weapon that wasn't seen as a viable pick for PvP. And then suddenly it gets a crowd control immunity and a shorter channel on the special ability that makes it a top tier pick for PvP whilst it loses the status as the king of solo dungeons. So if you recently spec'd into Great Axe for its PvE potential, you learned the hard way that you also have no guarantee in what will happen to the things you spec into. So you lose a lot of silver, you lose fame, you have no guarantee what will happen to the things you spec out of, and no guarantee in what will happen to the things you spec into, which is plenty of reason to literally never use the respec feature. The fourth biggest mistake you can do in Albion Online is not joining a guild. From the MMORPG genre, this game might just be the most social one that remains, and that shows in the design and the content the game has to offer. As a solo player, you will have multiple options in how to go about doing PvE, PvP or money making. When you join a guild and have people to play with, the amount of content available to you becomes tenfold. 
which in turn makes for more progress, more rewards and more fun. Just by looking at the PvP content you can do as a solo player, you do have some options but it's rather limited. You could do Corrupted Dungeons, Solo Ganking, Q4 Arena as a solo player and I think that's about it. Once you start playing with others, you can add a bunch more PvP content to this list while still doing the things that are already on it. You can add group ganking, group arenas, Crystal League, Faction Warfare, Hellgates, Black Zone ZVZ, May Trading, Castle and Outposts, Titans and Aspects, Hideout Contesting, Avalonian Raid Dives, and just contest a lot of PvE content within the game in general. And that's just for PvP, and I might have forgotten a couple things. But the same does apply to PvE and money making as well. Therefore, joining a guild is very important to enjoy the various aspects the game has to offer. The last thing you want to do is become someone that's stuck in the yellow zone, only doing solo dungeons and knocking new players down to the point you've completely lost it and blame everyone else except yourself for your lack of contentment whilst manipulating new players into thinking that's what Albin is about. That being said, it is important you join a guild that's right for you and does the content you want to participate in. And if you want to be a solo player, that's fine as well. But don't expect to take over a castle by yourself, because the game simply isn't designed like that. Understand, there will be heavy limitations as a solo player. Mistake number 5 is wearing expensive items. I think this is one we can't repeat enough within the Albion Online community. By far, one of the biggest mistakes new players make is going out with sets they rather not lose or simply can't afford to lose. You need to understand that gear is a gateway to content in Albion Online and nothing else. So you might have a really good set which you use in safe areas such as the yellow zones, hardcore expeditions and the arena. But as I covered in my previous point, this type of approach makes for a very limited game experience. For anything past the safe zones, your gear is nothing but a tool that allows you to participate in the various content. Therefore you shouldn't feel any attachment to your gear outside of these zones. And understand that losing your gear is what keeps the cycle going. At the end of the day, it is a full loot game where your gear allows you to participate in content, farm for more gear, engage and compete in PvP with other players, where sometimes you will obtain their gear and other times they will obtain yours. Therefore, don't ever take your expensive items outside of the safe areas and simply buy cheaper sets that you are okay with losing to play and progress in the unsafe areas. To add on that, I want to talk about mistake number 6, which is avoiding the red and black zones. I never understood the entitlement of players that come from games such as World of Warcraft who are against the whole idea of risking and losing their gear. I've played plenty of games myself, including World of Warcraft, and understand each game has its own design and set of rules. So if you want to have the design and rule set of World of Warcraft, why don't you just go and play that? It's very weird to me that these levels of entitlement exist, in which really all it shows is ignorance. As you progress within the game and obtain more silver, over time you can make your loadouts more expensive. At the start you might be comfortable losing a 50k loadout and maybe 2 months in you might be comfortable losing a loadout that's worth 10 times that. So if you want to participate in better and more content, you simply have to grind your fame and silver like every other Albion Online player and increase the loadouts you can afford to lose gradually. This will take nothing but time. You can always swipe for gold and go out with expensive loadouts from the start, but you will quickly learn that it will literally do nothing for you as you lack any form of experience. But once again, you will only gain through practice and time and by dipping your nose into unsafe areas. Whatever experience you think you are gaining in the safe zones will provide barely any value in the red and black zones. So to sum it up, my advice is that you never leave the safe areas with a loadout that you can't afford losing and you stop avoiding the red and black zones if you want the full Albion Online experience. Which brings me to mistake number 7, which many players are guilty of, new and old alike, doing transport runs on your own. I've already made clear that Albion Online is a very social game, so one thing I never understood is why someone would do high value transport runs on their own. Everyone is comfortable with losing a certain amount of silver without lying awake about it at night, and for some people this amount is in the millions. So I understand that if you do a transport run, which you are comfortable losing, you do it on your own. But for any transport runs you aren't comfortable losing, you can simply ask and perhaps even pay some of your friends and guild members to help you out on your transport run and decrease the chances of getting ganked. Yet, there are so many players who transport on their own that end up dying and lose a lot of silver. 
especially when you join a new guild which has its home set somewhere in the world of Albion, you might want to bring some sets over to make it your home as well and jump in on the action whenever it's there. Simply ask your new guild members whether they can help you out and you will quickly learn that people are willing to help. Just make sure never to transport more than you can afford to lose because even with communication and help, there is always a risk to it. And remember that the more you transport to a place, the more you will have to transport back when it's time to do so. The final big mistake you can make, and I saved this one for last because it is a bit more personal, is not feeding your curiosity within the game. For many players, this starts very early on, in which they ignore everything that's a first time experience because they want to rush to the end game. Which seasoned players know there's no such thing in Elvin Online. But even seasoned players themselves tend to tunnel vision in the type of content they do. Some players will join a huge alliance at the start of their journey and obligate themselves to nothing but CTAs to defend and attack for their guild and alliance. These very same players might be curious about content such as Hellgate, Crystal League, Roads of Avalon or any other type of PvP that's not ZVZ but will never get the chance to feed their curiosity because they are so occupied with everything that's going on already. This makes for burnout at some point, and these players will quit the game before they even have the chance to try out all the different content the game has to offer. Even worse are those that are told not to leave the blue and yellow zones because of the full loot aspect. The blue and yellow zones are like a second level of the tutorial, and although you can fame up and make money and even participate in Faction War with ZVZ in a safe way nowadays, Everything you learn, gain and experience is just a fraction of what you would learn, gain and experience in the red and black zones. Even between two types of content that look very similar on paper such as Hellgates and Crystal League, there is a ton of difference in reward, gameplay and experience. Action Warfare ZVZ has nothing like Black Zone ZVZ, whilst both of them are ZVZ content. But you won't know any of these differences if you won't feed your curiosity and experience it for yourself. At the end of the day, your time is the most valuable resource and I genuinely hope you will make the best use of your time and have the most fun possible within Albion Online. I hope this video will contribute to that in a positive way. Now let's talk about the biggest mistake you can make as a Albion Online player, which is not being subscribed to my channel. So if you haven't yet, make sure to do that and perhaps drop a like. As always, remember to have fun and I'll see you next time.